So I think what's really underappreciated is the role of inherited genetics in many tumor types. But fortunately, we now have a lot of tools and have a better understanding of what those potential genes could be. And so in the beginning of my talk, I kind of um, gave an overview of how solid tumors, which are far advanced in the inherited field, um, what they're doing with inherited genetics. So now inherited genetics is actually playing a role in not only understanding what cancer someone may be at risk for or why they got a cancer, but also what potential treatments the options they have, like PARP inhibitors are being used in breast and ovarian cancer. And so I then paint the picture of how we haven't been thinking about this enough in hereditary and heme malignancy patients, especially in adults. We've really, the tradition in the field is that this is really a pediatric issue, but I presented data from my own investigations at the University of Chicago, where 10% of patients coming to our transplant clinic have at least one first degree or second degree family member with a heme malignancy also. And when I looked at a whole panel of genes that are involved in hereditary bone marrow failure and familial leukemia, but also the solid tumor genes that people think of as solid tumor, uh, about 15% of this group of patients actually has an inherited mutation. And there are other examples now as investigators that have big data sets um, are starting to analyze the germline data and around 15 to 20% of many other tumor types probably have an inherited component. And so I think we just have to do a better job in heme malignancies. I think these are kind of the holy grail sort of things, right? And so I think understanding the basic biology of what is the single predisposition really helps us understand better what's driving this. And so I give one example of this gene DDX41 um, that we were part of the initial discovery with Jark Masiewski um, and Karsten muller todos group. And basically what um, they've shown is that potentially those patients' uh, leukemia cells are more susceptible to lenalidomide. This has to be replicated, but again, if you start with, you understand the biology, there could potentially be therapies that are specifically effective in one subgroup versus another. And so I think these are things that are coming from a mechanism-based understanding of this, each syndrome, as well as AML globally.